So in this uh, video, I'm going to show you how to use hyper tools in the case that we want to say, we want to analyze more than one image at the same time, what is called multi-set images, okay? For doing that, we have an example that says almonds individual that you can also download from the website in which we have five almonds, okay? And the target here is to classify them if they are bitter or sweet almonds, okay? The important thing of these images is that they are individual. And as you can see, the X and Y direction, they don't need to be exactly the same. It doesn't really matter the size of the image. The only dimension that should match, obviously, in all the images is the spectral dimension, and also the wavelengths, of course. Okay, so in order to do this, we go to HyperTools and in exploration, here we have the ability of selecting the samples that we consider. For instance, sample one, sample two, or even taking all of them with the mouse at the same time. This order here is extremely important because it's the order in which we will arrange them in what is called a big augmented uh, image, okay? <clears throat> then we load the wavelength vector. In this case, the same as usual and we say accept. And here, if for each image we have a mask, we can also load it together, like before, okay? So it's like sample one, we don't have a mask, add. Sample two, add. And we do the same with all the images, okay? In this case, we only have five images, okay? And now we have to create the collage, the augmented image. We do it in the same way or the working procedure as the subplot function in MATLAB. That is, we have five images, we have the possibility of arranging them like this. Sample one, sample two, sample three, sample four, sample five, or like this. Okay, in a row wise or in a column wise. We could also have the possibility of arranging them like this. Okay, it doesn't really matter in which position we arrange it. Okay, <clears throat> what matters is that here, if you remember the subplot command in MATLAB, or you don't know, it doesn't really matter, but we have to do is to say how many rows of images and how many columns of images we want to create. For instance, in the first case, in this case, we want two rows of images and three columns of images. In this case, this position will be just empty. In this following case, we have one row of images and five columns of images. And here, five, one, and here will be three, Two. So if we go back to tools, here we have number of rows, number of columns. In this case, I think that most appropriate would be, for instance, this one. So it's two rows and three columns and augment. Immediately, HyperTools put them, glue them together, and the spaces, in order to match the dimensions, the spaces that are left in blank. They are just created as they as hypertools create a mask. So from this point on, what we can do, if we want, we can save the augmented final cube or the mask or an important, and this is very important, the arrangement. Okay. It doesn't really have an effect if we if we don't save this. If we, then we want to go to exploration, we just save the arrangement, and that's, that is fine. But if afterwards we want to, for instance, make a classification model, it's convenient to save the final cube and the mask in the workspace. So when we make the classification model and then we can load that mega image and the mask created, okay? So that's the way we can interact to our, in, in, interact to it with this uh, tool. So you say, okay, I saved it in my workspace and we can go to pre-processing. For instance, I can do this probably 
we will make a little bit of SMV. Okay, makes SMV. I'm masking, I will just apply K means clustering, and I will say number of clusters, I will say three. Let's see what happens. Okay, so from this image, it is clear that I am interested in the cluster number two. So I will say two, accept. So we directly take the image like that. Also, what we can do is just to filter out a little bit of the edges. So I will just make an erosion of, let's put two. Okay, there we are. Okay, these are the almonds. Okay, we can check what we have in here. So for instance, what is the difference between this almond and this almond? Can you say like this? And like this, what is the difference between the green and the purple? Well, it is clear that there are some, well, first of all, the noise, then some peaks that are a little bit different. Also in here, okay, that's some, somehow some differences, okay? Then another thing, if we still want to use this mask instead of the previous one that we have uh, created, I just have to save it and say pre-processing mask, for instance, okay? Okay, so I have the mask created in my workspace. And then we will go to the analysis part. Just for the sake of fun, let's make a PCA with four latent principal components and let's run the model, okay? So here we have our PCA model with some stuff in the images. I will save the model, okay? And now one of the good things is that in view models, I can still see this model, okay? The PCA model. There we are. It's loading all the information, remember that. That's why it takes a little bit of, uh, of time just displaying all the information, but then we can just choose the one we want. Or what is important in analyze models here, I can select the model, model PCA, choose the principal component that I want to analyze, and then clicking here in multi-image selection, I can check with the arrangement that we did previously, I can load it and I can analyze the image that I want. For instance, I want to analyze image number three. There we are, this is the image number three and I can save it. So then we can extract some parameters. If we don't want to make this thing, we just don't say anything in multi-image selection, okay? And we analyze the five images together, okay? It's just up to the, uh, to the target of the, of the exercise, okay? As I told you in classification, we need a classification setting. We don't have this classification setting in this example, okay? But in, if I click here in classification, imagine that I do my classification model, then in prediction, I just have to load the image, the final cube, okay? And the mask that we did, for instance, in the here we are in the morphological uh, in the morphological operations. Okay, so this is how we could play around with more than one image. How many we can um, load here? Well, as many as the memory of our computers allow allow us okay, to to work. Okay.